What's happening? Episode 33 of Chat and Pony with Paddy the Baddy. Um, as always, sponsored by Flux. This new gear, this uh, this will be out by the time this episode comes out. This is fresh gear, so get on the website, have a gander. I uh, want to thank them for all the support. But today's episode, we have Leah McCourt. Uh, introduce yourself, Leah. I always do that. Let everyone uh, introduce themselves. What camera am I talking to? This one? Okay. Uh, yeah, I fight on Bellator um, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Short, and sweet. Short and sweet. Well, yeah, she's never made fighter, fights on Bellator. Uh, so how did you get into MMA? I always start on that. Whatever I speak to people about, I'm like, how did you start doing it? So my, my dad's from Liverpool. Yeah. So he we had three daughters and he was like, he wanted us to learn how to defend ourselves. So it was like, made us do judo when we were kids. So like he made us like have some form of self-defense. Yeah. Then I started doing MMA because I wanted to learn how to strike when I was like 19. And it was like, no no girls were fighting in Belfast or in Ireland. It was like, nobody was doing it. And the boys, there was a show on and they were like, you should fight. And because I was so obsessed with training, like I loved training. It was like, was there like more than the pros. They, like I just fought and went from there. It's crazy. Like I never set out to be an MMA fighter. It just kind of happened. Yeah, that's I. I say the same. Like I just walked in the gym one day. Yeah. So how long did you do judo for? So did it for sometimes like five or six, like for years and years. So I was yeah. like thirteen. Stopped for a bit and then went back when I was older and got my black belt. So I did, stopped for a couple of years and then went back. Yeah. Yeah. Nice stuff. You've got yeah. to get that black belt on. Yeah, you, only it. reason I went yeah. back. You can't not go back and get the black belt. I was like, belt brown belt, I was like, I didn't even want to do it. I was like, fuck, I need to go back and yeah, get the black belt. Yeah, it's got to be done that. Like, you've got to get to the black belt. Yeah. It just has to happen. I have got, I've obviously got into judo recently, and so has Molly, as you know. Yeah. You started doing you've a bit always of judo. done throws, I've seen it. Yeah, I've always yeah. done a bit of throws, like, but I've never, I've never done judo. Yeah. Ever. I've done throws with Paul. Like, I like, I like judo for MMA. I, I'm better at that than judo in the gi. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think. Yeah, I've, I don't know what you do in the geese like. Yeah. I don't know what jiu-jitsu in the geese like. I've only done that four times or something. <laughs> I know, it's so different, isn't it? It is completely different. I I, I hate jiu-jitsu in the geese. So do I, to be honest. It's just dead slow. And it's just, it doesn't go across for us, does it, to MMA? No, so. I don't think, um, people say it does, but I, I, if you're in camp, like you can't be doing geese, you're missing no, out on other sessions can't. if you're doing that. The, on, the only thing it does for you, I think, is grip strength. yeah. Totally. Because well, I'll be honest, when I feel some people's in the gym's grips. Yeah, like it's different. Matty Holmes. <sighs> lad, do you want to you see I've just done it again called a female lad? I'm <laughs> you me. can't. I know, I know Leah doesn't mind, but people are going to get on me case <laughs> watching comments. People will be like, he's just called a lad. <laughs> but uh, Matty Holmes has got a grip like a gorilla. Yeah, but it's different, isn't it? Like those judo, that judo grip, that back, people who have like a judo gay background, they yeah. can, they're, and it's That's a different type I mean. of no, strength never, as well. He's oh, never, he's never done, done none that. of that, just done jiu-jitsu. Yeah. And like he, he can lift ridiculous amounts as well, like, but he never lifted and his grip was always, like I've, I've rolled with him in the gym and I swear to God, when he grabs your hand, you're like... A vice. Some people do have that. It's just, you try and pull your hand and you're like... Yeah, you can. What What am I meant to do here? He just keeps ties old. He has, I always say, lad, you're like a gorilla. Yeah. And for with jiu-jitsu, that's just, just, just perfect, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But then once you have punches in, exactly. it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. I like it when they, with like, off the body locks as well, loads of like sweeps and trips that it's like effortless. You're not putting too much yeah. effort into it, I would think as well. Whereas when you're shooting like doubles and singles, like fuck, you have to commit. And that's right. I loved strips as well. Mm-hmm. Like I always say, because like you get them down, and it's so much less effort, isn't it? Exactly. I'm a lazy bastard. Yeah, you know what me I mean, too. I, I I love doing like lazy takedowns and lazy things, and like ending up on top. Yeah, like the most efficient. Yeah, because when you efficient. get fucking down there, then when it's you're a shooting whole... in on double legs and trying to pick people up, you it, it's tiring. Yeah. Like I was doing some throws this morning, the uh, lifting Ellis up, and after about seven, eight, I was dripping in sweat. <sighs> Going on here. I know <laughs> it's so much easier doing like the sweeps or like just catching the foot or catching kicks and taking them down. It's my favorite. That's what I noticed in like that's something I don't do, but I noticed in judo they do a lot of like just using the foot a lot, don't they? Yeah, they'll just, just like, hold, hold like hold on to your arms or have underhook over and they'll just start navigating your foot in yeah. different places. Justin was doing that to me all the time. I know you trained over there. Yeah, like, like I was having to like hop and keep up, and it's weird because like because that's just like straight judo. I've, I've never yeah, experienced and then that it, before. It off balances you, so if you don't go down, they go in like yeah, first exactly. second attack really down, fast. Go, like, but Justin as well, he, he goes like he's a wrestler and jujitsu, so he goes into Sick. single legs and double legs from like throws. It's mad. Yeah, his knowledge it, must be insane. It is, it's crazy, you know, when you're training with him. Like, he is a uh, 
It's mad as well because he's only about this big. Is he? Yeah, Tiny? He's only small. <laughs> is that where Ronda's trained as well? Yeah, that's too weird. Well, you know when um, I only noticed it the other day, when Ronda used to do all like her open workouts, it used to oh, be him. she'd be throwing everywhere. Uh... <laughs> he's just getting through on his head on all different UFC videos. It's hilarious. Yeah, her open workouts were sick. <laughs> yeah, she used to be proper intense, didn't yeah. she? Yeah, and doing every throw under the sun. And look, throws always look the best in the cage as well. You just see the fuck, the legs up there and then the yeah. big slam. When people get proper air time, you're made up. You're like, yeah. It's the best feeling like, ever. I, like I was made up after that throw in that last fight. I yeah. was proper made up. And it's when your body weight lands in them and you can feel the yeah. wind get taken out of there. And you're like, yes. <laughs> I'm made up. You felt every second of that when I was on top of you. Yeah. Because then from then on, it's a whole different ball game, isn't it? Yeah, I know. But I, well, actually, on my, in my first pro fight in Cage Wars, I fought a judo Olympian. So who was judo was better than mine and I got fucked. I was got I got my own airtime. I was like got through about the cage and I remember her throwing me and, and landed on me the what I do to people and was like, oh my god, is this what they feel every time I fucking do this? And they, especially in the cage because it's so hard. Like yeah. the, the floor is different to the mat, isn't yeah, it? It's completely different to a mat of cage. Like mm. I know what I the one worst thing for me about that last UFC fight was all the little, you know, because it's proper canvas. Yeah. I had so many little cuts and, and like, grazes. Yeah, map burns on, like, the inside of my foot there. It's and, worse, like, my shin the worst. and my knee. Oh, when you got, I got in the shower after him, I was like, oh, what's that? <laughs> and I was like, I only took, like, a punch. What's going on here? And I looked down and was like, oh, my God, what's going on? I had little scratches. It's like I walked through a, a thorn bush or something. I had yeah. all little scrapes everywhere. Or when your back's against the cage and you've got like, it's like a cheese grater, you've got all the bruises from the, like, the metal cage is the That's, worst. I'll be honest, I, I always lean against the cage anyway. I'm, I'm, I get shouted after that. I was just, used to it. To be honest, I do as well. Just sit on the cage like that. Yeah, man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> just lean against it. Yeah, because you, like, if you're like confident in your takedown defence, you can yeah. rest there a bit, can't you? That's what like, I end up doing sometimes. I have in, I have in the past like, Trying to get it out of my game. Yeah, that's the same here. Because yeah. you just rely on it yeah, too much. Yeah, you rely on it sometimes. And, and then look for that throw. I always like the throw. Yeah, <laughs> the I the do. Cage. There's all different options from there, though, isn't there? You can do all sorts of different stuff. But obviously, when you're getting pushed up against the cage, you're losing. Yeah. Just like what when, do they think? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's like the same way as like when if you're on the bottom, you're losing. Yeah. I think people are mad nowadays. They just sit on the bottom and fight. You've got to get up. Yeah. I know. It's harder than... Yeah, no, it's it's a lot harder. A little lot harder, especially <laughs> at the levels we're fighting at. Bellator, UFC, even Cage Warriors. It's, uh, it's easier said than done. I'm just a weird little bastard. What do you mean? Like, I haven't got a body type like anyone else. Everyone looks at me and thinks, oh, I'll fight him, I'll knock him out. You know what I mean? And then no one's ever done it. Yeah. Like, and when we end up on the floor, I'm Tied a proper up. weirdo. Like, yeah, like you did to me the other day. Yeah, I'm strange, aren't I? Like, yeah, I'm not normal. He pulled my hair extension out and then come here and me. Yeah, I was like, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> it was just hair. Like I see little, I see little hairs about this long on the floor off me, and I'm thinking, yeah, you wanted to see this chunk of hair? What come out of here, Ed? Hey, you wanted to see it? It was about that that much across, and it was all the way like down here. Yeah? I couldn't, couldn't believe that. You know, when shit, is that your hair? No, no, it's my extensions. It's like, ah, oh, fucking hell. Oh, I was thinking that thing must be expensive, then you're not asked. <laughs> oh, I missed it. That's so funny. Oh, that's mad. They'll be training in them. Because Laura, Laura moans about them. I know, but the, it, I can't describe it, but you can plait, the, the hair plaits better so it stays in better when you put extensions in. Yeah. I don't know how you, yours look would really annoy me because it's just always hang, like hanging. That's why I have to get it like cut a certain amount of time before. But like I was saying then, when, with my debut, I got a cut on like the Friday and a fourth the next Saturday and it had been trimmed a little bit too short so I had the proper bowl cut. You <laughs> know what I mean? That was where everyone was saying I look like a 16th century peasant. <laughs> <laughs> so like... Would you ever just get a skin it? No. Shave it? Never, no. Never? Never. Don't think I ever could. My dad's still got a good head of hair at 61 oh, so I haven't he? got to worry. Is his hair like yours? Not like mine but he had hair like me when he was younger <laughs> but like now he's still got a good head of hair though which is nice. Would you ever grow it longer? <laughs> Nah, gets too long. Like, I'd never grow a beard. This is... Uh, when did I have a shave? I had a shave. Was it Thursday? Yeah, I had a shave two weeks ago today. And that's that's me two weeks. Mm. Some like some people have, like, a five o'clock shadow, don't they? I, I don't. I, I don't have a... I can't even grow a proper beard. But that's what I mean. I always look at Vince and say, you're horrible when he's eating because all stuff gets stuck in it's his beard. beard. yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, it's like... It happens with loads of people, obviously. I always watch that Beard Meets Foods videos 
and it all gets stuck in his uh, beard, lad, and you're just like, oh, next video. <laughs> oh, he went, oh, it's mad. I, that's why I couldn't have a beard. Especially I'm, when you're training and sweating and I'm wrestling a, and all of the I'm it? a messy bastard as it is. When I yeah. need to scan, it goes all over my face, so I've got a beard. I'm going to have to go and get a proper face wash after I've had a scan. <laughs> a scrub, shampoo. Yeah, I'm shampoo. Get, I'm like, no, scrubbing it all up. <laughs> <sighs> Swerve that. <laughs> So when you had that first MMA fight, where was that? What year was that? 2014. 2014, like, yeah. There was, wasn't really any women fighting mm, them, was there? There was no. only like Rosie, literally. Yeah, and I didn't really know of her. It was like my first fight I ever watched was Gina Carano and Cyborg. I can't remember watching that fight. Yeah. So, That's Strike Force. Yeah. So whenever I was fighting, I think Ronda just came on the scene. And like obviously she had a judo background and so did I. So yeah. I was like, loved her, still love her. And then, yeah, just kept fighting. And they, 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 I did the IMAFs, the Europeans in Birmingham and then Vegas and then went pro and was in Cage Wars and then Bellator. See, what, what were them IMAFs like though? That's one thing now. Nah. Unreal. I, obviously, I, went, I went, went pro when I was young, but I wish I would have had a chance to do yeah. the IMAFs. So you know what I mean? The IMAFs we did in, I did in Birmingham were the first ever European ones. So it was like way back at the start. And because I couldn't get fights anywhere, I seen in the in the weight divisions it was like three girls so I was like I'm gonna get three fights and like we none of us had any money we had to pay to go and do this and we had to pay to like enter and then like bring our coaches over like everything yeah. we paid was a lot of money so I won the won the Europeans and then went to Vegas for the ones it was part of UFC 200 fight week did they end up because you won the Europeans did they pay for you to go there no so no, then you then had we to had pay to, yourself yeah, again and then my team <laughs> but whenever the I masked were in Vegas it was like was part of the UFC Expo, so it was like unreal that event. Yeah. And then they moved to Bahrain. I was like, I'm so glad I did it when I was in yeah, Vegas. Yeah. So we did um had like three fights in four days. So you were just fighting, fighting, fighting. But yeah. not only that, you were cutting weight every day. So we had to get up at like five and make weight for like nine AM and then fight. Like was so, you, so was you fighting at the weight that you normally fight or like a weight above or um Because when when Ben done it. Well he's a welterweight now, but he done it when he was like sixteen. Yeah. So when Ben done it, he done it at welterweight. So did he go heavier? Yeah, he went the weight heavier. So sure, sure, because I'm like 65 is the heaviest women's division, so I had to do it that weight, like yeah. featherweight. So th- th- there's no heavier, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I had to like still yeah, cut to low. Do that hell. Yeah, but um, that was like the best experiences because you got to go to like unreal places, like we like even walking about the expo. There was like Chris Weidman, Nate Diaz, and you're just like an amateur, like oh my god, <laughs> fighters. <laughs> and then we did um. Yeah, that was such an experience. Just being amongst you, like you when I mean, you like people that you're looking up to and yeah. you're out there fighting. It's like I thought that was unreal, but probably could have stayed amateur longer. But it just wasn't the, the, the fights. Do you know that, what I mean? It wasn't. That, well, the... I went pro a few years earlier, but that's the same with me. I went. I was amateur, and I ended up winning that and fighting like a year of like fifteen months. Yeah. And Paul ended up just saying to me, "Lad, you've got no one else to fight." Yeah. <laughs> so I just I had to I had to go. It's like say people would say you should stay as amateur as long as possible, but when you can't, it's like no, you have you to can't. go pro. It was like me. It's That's like when you see people with records like twenty five and two and that amateur and like even like fourteen and three and that you're like, what are you doing? Still yeah. amateur. Ten I don't ten amateur fights is as all you need. M- yeah. Like max. Yeah. Need well, that's I did like seven. Yeah, seven. I done nine. Well, yeah. You don't reckon you need any more than ten. These people who are having like 30 amateur fights, 20 amateur fights, it's just stupid. Yeah, it's like for me, I just want to keep testing myself against better people. So if you're still on the same scene, like yeah. that's like... Yeah, you can't because yeah. everyone's just the same, aren't they? Uh, like the, the people, I can remember when I've done it an amateur, I beat loads of people and then pe- when people were suggesting people to beat, I'd already beat someone who beat them. Yeah, so you're like, what's the yeah, point? Yeah, so like, what's the point in beating it? And like, you're risking injury, you're risking your body and, exactly. if I can't, and you're not getting paid. <laughs> what's exactly, the point? as an amateur, you're not getting paid, all you're getting is money on your tickets. Yeah. That was killer, that, wasn't it? Bad. <laughs> I made some money on tickets, me, though, to be fair. As an, were, amateur and a pro, as an amateur and a pro, I made some money on tickets, me. But that's just because I could, could sell loads of them. I did, when I was doing it for Dublin, I just thought it was just, like, the biggest headache ever. Everybody, oh, yeah, it is hard work. It, yeah, running it's hard around work. everywhere doing tickets. That's why in Liverpool it's not so bad because nine out of ten people just want to deal in cash. Yeah, so everyone just comes and oh, sees you and handy. gives you cash. I suppose come to your gym, yeah. Yeah, everyone now, just comes to the gym. The and ticket stuff. links now is the easiest thing ever, isn't it? Rather than actually, but yeah, doing I don't. Them. Yeah, I just don't get any. Like, it's hard work. Yeah, I suppose now you begin. But this time, this time I've got so obviously I need to get some for my friends and family. But I don't get any to just sell to random people. Yeah, that means I mean? it's a melt. Just me friends and family who I can sort. 
and other than that, it's it's the hard work. I have people messaging me on Twitter saying, "Oh, can you sort a ticket for the FC?" I'm like, "What?" <laughs> I know. It's, uh, I'm the same. It's like you get like two free tickets. People think you get like yeah, 30 tickets. Yeah, people think you get loads it's like tickets. you don't get any tickets. <laughs> yeah, but, well, you get four free tickets yeah. at the UFC. It's the same, something like tiny. Yeah. It's like you you have to bring your family. And they go to meet dad and his twin and like two other members yeah, of the family. Yeah, people think you get so many. Mean? People I think, think you, you get don't. loads, you don't. Uh, it's mad, you know, I swear. People think that, oh, what do you mean you're fighting? You should get loads of tickets. I know. And the way, don't what the worst one is when someone rings you a week before. Oh yeah. Or I've had ones like the day before and the day of. Oh lads, any tickets? I'm like, lad, are you Google messing? It. Yeah. Google it. Are you for real? Like, I wouldn't you... even reply. <laughs> these are like some of my, some of these are like close mates. You know oh, what I mean? It's like fuck off. Any, any tickets? I'm like, lad, are you for real? Is there any tickets? I don't know. As if there's any tickets now. <laughs> they all got they all sold out five minutes when they went on sale. <laughs> I had like a select few for the lads and for me bed and for me family. Yeah. It's such a melt. It is. It's hard work. You've just got to get on with it though, haven't you? People think the fighter's life is a, is a completely different life to what it is. I know, and the million messages saying, how do I watch the fight? How do I watch it? How do yeah, I wa- how do I watch it? Oh my God. I can remember getting shit over when I fought the V Martinez on Cage Warriors. Like on the way to the vet, all those people were messaging me, what's on and this, asking, 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 asking. And I just put, put something like, uh, I don't know exactly what time I'm fighting and that people so can you just stop asking me Twitter's <laughs> blew up with it <laughs> all people started giving me shit oh what, what, what are you being a come for and I'm like I'll be but a like that's just people that obviously don't fight that are messaging yeah. the fighter on fight day or like, the day before asking how day, to watch it when, when I fought David Martinez I was literally sitting there on Twitter on my phone till about an hour before I fought oh my god and Paul was like put your phone away now put your phone away lad I've just done it again I was sitting there like that just <laughs> back to people I ended up having a bet with some fella Said something like, lad, I'm going to finish him in the first round. What? And he went to, I'll put under pound, or under pound or something to a, a men's mental health charity if you finish him in the first. If you don't, uh, I think he's going to beat you anyway, but if you don't, um, you've got to put it in. I went, yeah, it's sound deal. Obviously, won the fight, got back on my phone about 10 minutes after the fight and just went, yo, lad, get that money donated, kid. He obviously never deleted his account. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like an absolute sausage. You love replying to the trolls, don't you? Yeah, I can't help it. You know what I mean? <laughs> just don't think that they should just get away with shit. They shouldn't. They just shouldn't get away with shit. They get away with too much. Think you can say whatever and they can't because they're on fake accounts. Does me head in. Who would ever make a fake account to write shit to someone? Like, like happy, successful people are not making fake accounts to, to, to talk shit to someone. Yeah. So I, I don't even read comments. I just have like, I have like the filter where it's just like people I follow, I see comments from. Yeah. So I never see anything. Yeah. Because nice. I'm like, why read shit? Like, Most I, of them follow you though. Like they follow me anyway. But I mean, I can only see the ones I follow. Oh, that you follow. Yeah. You I should get, do that. Yeah. yeah. You're right there. That would like, save you a lot of time. I love reading through them though. <laughs> I love reading through them. I love giving shit out. I can't help it. As I say, people need putting in their place. <laughs> it's like your hobby, isn't it? Yeah. People need putting in the place. Laura fumes sometimes. Like, I'm just sitting there and she's trying to get a conversation on. I mean, she ends up like punching me in the shoulder or slapping me or something. Fucking trying to talk to you. I'm just sitting there like Steam uh, coming out of your ears. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I used to be bad like that on Insta, but I've just stopped yeah, you replying used now. To try and, did you used to try and find their IP addresses? Yeah, I've, 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 got, I've, I've found a few people's IP addresses before. I've never been able to put them out there, like, but I've found a few people's IP addresses. So where they live? Yeah. Like one that of them had said something so horrible. Funny. One of them had said something horrible about Baby Lee when I got my account t- taken. He lives in Tasmania. <laughs> what the fuck? You know what I mean? Who the fuck lives in Tasmania? Exactly. Slapping about a baby. Exactly. It's just crazy. I asked jo- Ozzy Joel about it and he, asked, he started laughing and went, ah, Tasmania. He went, half of them can't read and write. And I just started <laughs> laughing my head off. I was like, oh, don't worry about it, lad. That's what I mean. I, I, I'm, I'm too emotionally involved. So now on Instagram, I just can't read comments. Yeah. If I read comments, I'll end up arguing with people. Do you have Instagram? Or is yeah, somebody yeah, else has no, it? No, I have it. But oh, yeah. I just, I can't, I can't read comments. Yeah, don't read the I comments. I just leave it. It's like, you can do that as well. You can you can change it in your notifications to just people you follow. Yeah. You'll see their comments. Yeah, that's a good shout as well. But it's just, I'm going to have to probably leave it on Twitter the next one. Because 
I haven't had any warnings on Twitter yet. Twitter's like half sound. I don't understand how I can get my Twitter account up. If you haven't been on Twitter and seen some of the shit the on shit Twitter, people right. there's porn all over Twitter. <laughs> If you, I'm not messing. It's mad. You go on Twitter and there's all videos, porn. There's people getting their head chopped off. There's all mad shit happening. They're both and I'm owned getting, by the same person, aren't they? And I'm getting me... A, no, no, not Twitter. And oh, I'm I getting thought. me a counter off me for calling some dickhead a fat divvy. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, or like a fat, ugly cunt. And I'm getting my account off when there's people with all mad videos on there. It just, oh, it just makes no sense to me. Oh... But yeah, Twitter and uh, Facebook and Instagram are owned by the same company. Oh, I thought Twitter and the Instagram The lizard man. Were... Um, but Twitter is Twitter's now owned by Elon Musk, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Has the deal not gone through yet? He was, he was buying it. I was though, saying that, he? yeah. He was, he was, yeah. He wanted to get it, like. Yeah, so because we'll they, see, they but kept... How much did they want off him again? 43 million. 43 bi- billion, billion was it? it? Billion? Fuck. But he's not taking it yet because he's not convinced about whether there's bots on there or not. Like yeah, there's definitely loads of bots on there. Yeah, yeah there's lad of you there's loads of bots on Instagram. Literally all you've got to do is get up my latest post on Instagram and scroll down to the bottom. And on the the bottom of the comments, every one of them's emailed such and such. They helped me so much, helped me in five thousand pounds. Lad I swear, go on like any of my posts if you scroll to the box and it's like, oh, FX trading, oh we can get you this. You're like, what? Swear yeah. pisses me off. I, I try and delete them all. Because I don't want anyone like getting sucked into it and getting dota off them. Yeah, because I know like older people boys, like mums on the fucking oh, Instagram. Oh, I seen like. one the other day in the that wasn't was on on the internet. Get on this. Um, some fella pretended to be Gerard Butler on Facebook. Conned <laughs> an ex police woman. No, of he all. didn't. An ex police woman out of five hundred grand. You're a fucking liar, lad. The Tinder Slender 2.0. The most she ever gave him in one go was 20 grand. So she gave him about, about like, 100 different if a deposits. If asked me for a fiver, I would be like, no, how yeah, could you like, give what? him? What? What for? <laughs> what? What for? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why? Like, 20 grand? You know, he said he was he said he was building an hospital in, oh, for in like, an African sake. country. But I don't know, like, she was an ex-police officer. So how can you be that gullible? You obviously know the scams what go on. How can you be that gullible, love? Oh, my God. Did you see the Tinder swindler? Oh, I've watched it. It made me blood boil. He, like, no, but those girls, I'm just like, How have you how? been that daft? It's not their fault at the same time, but it is. No, but it, it, but I, it I, is. They're, like, they're enablers. It's yeah. like, how can you not think that, that he is, like, what's he doing with that money? Has anyone ever got on me saying, hey, My enemies are coming. Lad, <laughs> the man them are coming to get me. <laughs> I need 20 bag and I would be like, why do you need 20 bag? Like, what I'll for? come round now and we'll do them in. Like, <laughs> what? Fuck, <laughs> mad. I don't understand. Like, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen it. So, like, skip a little 10, 20, 30 seconds or something. But know the end when it says he's out of jail. Yeah. And he's just living a life again and he's giving people business advice on the internet. Yeah, he's back on Instagram. Oh, my God. It's was, like, did you watch... Like, in- I thought, like, I, like, even though them women are very gullible and daft, I swear to God, if I seen him on the street, I'd punch him in the face, you know. Like I'd, I'd just run over and hit him. I said that to me bad after you watched it. I was like, I know they was daft people, but like, and then, I would punch him square in his nose. And then did you see the inventing Anna, the, about the Russian girl? No, me, Laura's watched that. I haven't seen it's that, but Laura was well. watching it. She pretended she was like a Russian heiress or German heiress had absolutely no money and lived in hotels but didn't pay the bills in New York. And like was, she faked some like checks to nearly get a 23 million pound loan. And like it nearly went through until like the last minute and she's in Rikers now. But she's not a celebrity off that. Like it's just, people are just insane. Like yeah. what they get away yeah. with and what like, they can he, do. He changed his name and everything, didn't he? The, the Tinder one? Yeah. yeah. The Tinder one that he changed his name. Yeah. It wasn't his proper name. Like when he went back to where he was originated from and his mum opened yeah, it was the totally door. Different. She was just like, Yeah, like I haven't seen him for years. <laughs> Imagine that, you might just going, Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen him for years, you know. As it's if it's normal. Madness. Madness. The stuff you see on that Netflix though, it is mad and it your head falls yeah. off. I watch Especially in camp when you like have nothing else to do and you're like watch, trying to watch something. something. I love to watch in camps, The Last Dance, you know. The Last Dance? Don't tell me you haven't watched The Last oh, Dance. Oh, sorry. Michael I Jordan. absolutely love it. Yeah. The Bulls. Yeah, unreal. It's heavy. It's heavy. 
I like watching that in he camp. He is just the, the... He's a machine. Yeah. He's the I man. I love him. He just sent me this cigar. Yeah. Like whiskey just... He's an absolute G. He is a G. Michael Jordan's the man. I swear. He's so cool. I don't even watch that much basketball. When people say to me LeBron's better, I just go... Shh. No, I don't even... Shh. He's not even... No. It's just even though he's got state shares in Liverpool, lad. Like, I should back him, but nah, Michael Jordan, man. Two it's just his, like, character. He's just so cool. Yeah. Like, on that programme, it just shows how driven he is. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Sick. It's mad. I loved all the different characters. He went baseball and then went back to basketball. Know, just mad. Rodman's the sickest character He's ever, though. He's the best. He is. Love him. Like, when they were, they were playing a game on, like, the Saturday, and he was <laughs> he was on, like, Friday Night Nitro in WCW, <laughs> powerbombing people and hitting people with steel chairs, lad. When yeah. Were, I've done it again. <laughs> when they were playing the next day, he's a nutter. I loved him in it. All the characters were so crazy. Yeah, he was. It wasn't like there was only like one or two of them. One of them, one of them that was like a normal fella. Is it Steve Kerr? Yeah. Who's the manager now for the, the Golden yeah, State Warriors? One of, yeah. Yeah. They're in the final actually. What? What? Who won last night? Because it was one all going into last night's game. The Celtics and um, the Golden State Warriors. Because Blaze is a Blaze doesn't like the Celtics. What's that basketball? Yeah. Me, me. Molly supports the Celtics. Yeah, because we, we, and we, me, Alice, Molly, and Paul in Boston went to see them basketball. Yeah. Molly supports them and like, who won? The Celtics won. It's 2 1. The basketball, like, the games are unreal. So it's, yeah, the Celtics are winning 2 1. Heavy. Blaze is the, uh, the Sixers. So he does, they don't like Boston, do they? They uh, don't like each other. It's so, the atmosphere is unreal in those basketball yeah. games. Sick. I went to one years ago when I was in New York with Chris, new boxing coach, but it was a Nets game. So it was half empty. Like, I don't think they were a good, th- or they might be a good team now, but back then they weren't a good team. So it was it was proper empty. Oh, really? And like the atmosphere. They were shooting like subways in the crowds and like they were just, it was just mad. Yeah, when madness. we went to the baseball. Oh, the like, kids? The baseball. I've never even seen baseball. Boss. Was it? Swear it's mad. Like, half the time they're not even like playing. You know what I mean? They're not even hitting the ball. On. It's just, the, the fan cam's the sickest thing ever. And when like, the camera goes on, like, yeah. someone, uh, and like, when they, like, they're sitting here eating or drinking, and then it goes, oh, <laughs> start doing that, oh, it's hilarious. You I know, know that is what people them, love watching Them that. Yanks are boss. I love Americans, you know, they're, they're so, just, they're so just funny know, and over the yeah. top. Even when you, when you get to the airports in America, you're just like, oh, America, they're just mental. They're yeah. just crazy people everywhere. Oh, uh, it's boss. Yeah, love they're it. all, they're all, they're so enthusiastic yeah that's aren't it they? dead enthusiastic just like yeah yeah what are we doing what are we doing the boss <laughs> so uh, when you were telling Brandon Schwab that heavy what that means oh yeah heavy like I was, I was saying so many things over there and people were like what yeah and like heavy. where we've got me slang and like heavy now Graham and Edith just say heavy you know what I mean it's oh such yeah such a good heavy. adjective it is it? and like I always say heavy can be used for anything yeah literally you like, and Molly always say it like oh that scram was heavy that it was good. It was good, yeah. It doesn't mean oh, it was a, was, was a weighty scran. You know what I mean? It means it was heavy. Uh, someone like you went on a night out or a festival and it was good, lad, that fezzy was heavy. Or you went to a fezzy and you got your head punched in. Oh, oh it was heavy that way, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like there's so many That's different ways. the best ways. word ever. It is. There's so many different ways you can use it. Blaze does it now as well. He just goes, heavy. And you're just like, oh, you know, I've got even got to get people saying it in Philly. Yeah, he's it's got he's sick. getting like a Scouse accent. Yeah, he's he? getting it's it's a he's got a little bit of Scouse twang to it now, like where he's been with us for a bit. It's yeah. Funny. Obviously, we spoke before about IMAFs. So when did you have your debut? When you fought at Judoka, but uh, two thousand seventeen. Seventeen. Is that when you had your debut? Yeah. Pro debut in Bournemouth. Yeah. Bournemouth uh, of all places. Warriors. Oh my god, it's rough. Like the the rough night. Yeah, bad night. And then I remember waking up the next day and I literally, she'd thrown me so hard. I had two black eyes, like big, big, big panda eyes. And I'd like cracked my collarbone from where she'd landed. So I couldn't breathe. I remember waking up in this dark fucking hotel room. <laughs> it's like, I can't even sit up. I was like lying like this, with like everything sore. I was like breathing like this and couldn't even sit up or get dressed. Like I was in so much pain. I was like, what the fuck, what? I could have a million jobs. Why am I doing this? So did you end up getting that checked out though? Did you see what it was? Yeah, that was like cracked. That what do you fucking call that? Collarbone, is yeah, it? Yeah, why? I don't know why. That my, my yeah, your like... mind just goes blank. I'm all. <laughs> I'm mad at all the time. I swear. 
Space yeah, so that like took a while to heal. I had to get like injection in it. And then didn't fight till like a year later for, for in Belgium in Cage Warriors against yeah. Manon Fioro, the French girl. And then went to Bellator when I, when I only had two pro fights. So it's always been like big platforms, like yeah. fucking intense. And I still feel like I don't even... Like, do you know when you get to a certain stage and you're like, okay, you're kind of fighting at the top? Because I'm like top five in my division Bellator, but you still yeah. feel like yeah, you're a white belt in MMA. You still feel like there's so much to... <laughs> There is the sort of, like, I hope Paul always says it and I've started saying it, we've probably forgot more than we know. Yeah. Because we've it's been like, taught that much. And the more you know, the less you know. Yeah. It's like, it's like weird feeling, isn't it? It is like, like you, you don't ever think like that when you're younger, when you start doing it. Oh, I'll know too much. And yeah. literally some people do know too much and their head gets muddled when they go to go for a move and they think, oh, I should do this. That's why I always think it's better to keep it simple, especially for MMA. Yeah. I do. I totally. just keep it simple, me. Even though people don't think I do, and it's like flying triangles and shit like that, but you've got to get a bit creative, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. That's why I love fighting because you can do anything in there. I know, like when you walk into that cage, you you come out and your life is like it just totally changes, yeah. doesn't it? Like it's just it's that opportunity. It's like nobody understands what the pressure and all that feels like walking out to that cage, but when you walk out again, it's like yeah. it can change like for the better. I, I massively. always say like when you get your hand raised and the feeling after it. The only feeling I could compare to it, and I I can't say it because I would never be able to give birth. Yeah. Would be giving birth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like indescribable. Kid, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like indescribable the feeling you get when you win and you're jumping on the cage like that. It's just, I don't know, I, I can't explain it, me. I always say it's I people. can, it's like, yeah, it's really hard to communicate yeah. in words, isn't it? Like, and like people are like, what do you feel like backstage? And I'm like, I don't even know how to, yeah. com- like, to put it into words. Because like you're always like warming up in like a tiny room like this and it's like, and two minutes later, you're walking out in front of like 15,000 people. Yeah. That it's is like, exactly going from what it's this, like. this tiny little shitty room. With about six years in their tops. Stinking. Everybody's nervous. <laughs> With everyone being warm and up. It's yeah. all stinking and sweat. And then you see people being like carried back, fucking co- covered in blood. And you're there like, fuck, I have to go and do this. <laughs> <Isn't it? laughs> like it's mad, isn't it? When yeah. you think about it. And it nobody is. sees that shit. They just see the fight. They don't see like the emotions that everybody goes through to get yeah, to that. Yeah, no one, it's like, as you say that, before I went out, I seen some heavy knockouts and some yeah. heavy submissions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Molly, obviously. <laughs> it's Jai losing, and even Grundy got put a kit by Ian McLeany with the choke. Didn't yeah. You know what I mean? It's mad when you're just so sitting like, there watching it. You're like, yeah, oh. just sitting there watching it. Like, yeah, I'm going out there to do that now. Uh-huh. <laughs> it is crazy when you're watching it from like the tiny room in the back, being like, "Fuck, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna be out there in a minute." See, do you I'm, get nervous? No. Nah. See, I do. I just like, I, I love it, you know. I just, I'm a, as I say, I'm a weirdo in yeah. personality and body. Like, I'm I'm just strange. I'm not normal. Like, that's not normal. It's not. I'm to standing not in nervous. the back, just like, I can't wait to get out here and punch this fella in his head. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, I'm just like, that's probably why you can be so creative. Yeah, you're, you're not nervous. That, like, you're loose. I feel like when I get in there. Did like, you ever get nervous? My first fight I did when I was younger, like my first ever amateur fight. You know what I mean? The yeah. only other times I've been nervous, I haven't done well. Really? And like that was when I've like main evented in the Echo. Yeah. Because obviously it's in front of all your own people. Yeah. And you're, everyone's there to watch you. Yeah. That's the whole reason they were there. So that was a bit of pressure. But my first amateur fight, because I was 16, took it on like 10 days notice, a week's notice, and I fought some kid who was 24. So that one I was a bit nervous going into, but then when I won that fight, I was just like, oh, I'm going to smoke everyone. <laughs> it was weird. I just, yeah. I just, I hope I, I get a, to that point where I'm not like really nervous. I had a mad belief in myself, and it, it, it is just weird. I, I can't put my finger on it because I don't know where it come from. Mm. I genuinely don't know where it come from. But that, it's, the, it's like the key, isn't it? Like yeah. having self belief because you, you'll commit to so much more when you're in there rather that, than hold that's back that's why I think everything's happening for me now the way because I've said this for years I've said this is going to happen and that's why I think everything's happening I've envisioned it I've imagined it I've always believed yeah, in it's going like to happen yeah since I was a kid with a skinhead yeah with a proper skinhead that video what was going around me the other day was funny weren't it Which did you see it? it where I'm like that picking jambo teas out my teeth <laughs> uh, I was 16 I'd done an interview and uh, I had a fight with that Scott Gregory a few days later. And I'm like that. Yeah. No. Yeah. He goes, where'd you oh, hail? He it. goes, where'd you hail from? And I go, next gen. 
And he goes, <laughs> one no, that's your team. He goes, no, that's your team. Where are you from? And so Liverpool. Yeah, all one way dance. He's like, how are you gonna get on? I was like, I'm just gonna win. And yeah, and then he went like, how? And I don't know. I don't, I don't care. He's gonna win. So made him knock him out. It's your, uh, decision him doesn't matter. And that was it. You know what I mean? It's just so like cool. it's weird. Because there's all footage from me when I was younger. I know. Because I remember seeing it. I think it was I don't know if it was before I was fighting or like when I started fighting you but you were like a kid like so young yeah. and then my dad because my dad's from Liverpool always used to send me yeah. your stuff because he loved you so much he's like <laughs> just like a scouser because that's who he is and it, that's why he wanted me to do MA I think because he's seen like all the cage warrior stuff and he loves it now yeah, like, still cage, loves it like I them cage but people are saying to me now about you like you and Molly and I'm like it's like because we've known you for so long and you've always been like this it's like yeah. they're only discovering your personalities and what you're like now and it's like we've known this for like 10 years mm. or whatever it's like old nearly exactly. not yet not it's old just, it's, it's just like, normal to yeah, us you know what I mean we're <laughs> around each other every day you yeah. know what I mean people always say to me like oh lad Molly's sick and she's like I'm just like lad yeah it's Molly it's Molly that's just it yeah you know what I mean she's sick yeah. <laughs> in general she's a nutter when <laughs> anyone asks me I'm just like yeah Molly's a nutter she's so boss funny. She's like the best person to have around you. The she best. Doesn't, she doesn't. She's never negative about nothing. Yeah. Like that's a, that's why we bounce off each other so much because I'm the yeah, same. I'm the positive about well. stuff. Yeah. That's how we bounce off each other, and like we do. Like she never even had to do any weight last time, any water weight. She just was on weight. But the time before, we were sitting in the sauna together and stuff like that. You know what yeah. I mean? But in the past, she hasn't. She hasn't had that when she's been in the. It's UFC. so nice to have someone there doing it with you, isn't it? Yeah, that it knows is. what you're going through. It's it's. Like, no one ever understands no. it really. 99.999% of the world I'd never know what it's like to do a weight cut no and then fi- fight turn and and fight the next day and then fight, fight six a human hours in the cage it's like the most real feeling isn't it when you walk in and you hear the door close yeah it's like let's fucking go I, I, oh, I swear I love it me I, I do, can't I wait do, to fight I, I, my favourite bit is in the warm up I, I, when I'm in the hotel I hate being in the hotel I hate doing like fight get, I'm always the calmest in the warm up I'm just like ugh the shit, fucking hard shit's done. Like getting there to that point. Yeah. With your injuries and weight cuts and like all, media all, and like, shit. And... As soon as the weigh-in's done for me. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus. This half fella. Nice one for the bless you. <laughs> um, I never like all for me. Like as soon as I've weighed him, it's such a I've relief. just got a smile on my face yeah. from then on. Like literally, Food. I'm just happy. Then I'm just like, yeah, I get we've we're getting paid. Now I'm going to do my job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, in fact, that's my job. Now we're going to have fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the job done. I know, now we it's get the in best there. feeling ever. Oh my God, stepping on the scales is the best feeling yeah, ever. Yeah, it is. Ever. Best feeling ever. That is close to winning the fight. <laughs> yeah, when you step on the scale and see you're on weight, you're just like, yes, all the hard work's <gasps> being done. Now it's the fun part. Yeah. So when's your next fight? So not until September 23rd, fighting in Dublin. Just yeah. been announced, yeah, against the Brazilian girl. Can't remember her name. She's ranked number nine, and I'm number five. So she's had a lot of fights. Like, but I'm um, excited to get back in after obviously lost my last fight in February. Yeah. I'm back in Dublin, the best arena, best crowd ever. Probably close to Liverpool. I haven't been. Uh, I never. Where was where was the last one? In Dublin. In Dublin again, yeah. Yeah. Same again. Yeah. yeah nice star. Can't go wrong. I went through a phase that way it was just Liverpool all the time. Yeah, like it's so handy, isn't it? Yeah, everyone can come. It's and sad. everyone can come and you're not travelling, cutting weight, looking for food, like yeah. all that takes so much stress off it. Like that's the only good thing about the UFC. Literally, you don't you don't worry about it. I know, they look like, after your food and everything. They sort your food. So good. They sort everything. They weigh you when you get there, weigh you each day to see what your weight is. To Are to you sure. running away from the skills? What? Are you running away from the skills? Uh, no. Nah. On fight week, like last time I turned up a fight week, like 76 key. Oh, that's so good. You know what I mean? Turned yeah. up like that. And then I think. Do you get up... most of it off in camp and then the yeah. last bit? Yeah. Like last time I'd done £10 overnight. Oh, that's not bad. That was it. £10. Didn't do any more. Did you bath or sauna? Did you bath? Yeah. I don't like the saunas. Me, do you sauna or bath? I did baths and then the last two have done sauna because I've got PTSD from the baths. Because. <laughs> Every time I see a bath, I'm like, I've got PTSD from the baths. Like, because I had such a bad weight cut in America doing baths. <gasps> I, what, like, that weight cut I did in May last year, 24 hours cut weight in baths. I did five baths. I, like, didn't sleep. That was losing like 0.1, 0.2. Three, and I think in five baths, I lost one pound. 
The body just, I never realised. I thought people were talk bullshit. No, when you're at the wall. Yeah, when you're at the wall, you're at the wall. You literally hit the wall. And I was like on death's door. Once you stop sweating, you stop sweating. It is, it's heavy. Like genuinely. And I was like, kept doing the bath. The scales were the same. Scales were the same. And I was like, fucking hell. Like I never want to do that again. Yeah, it is. It is horrible. I have done That was the worst. That was the worst day of my life. How much did you do? How much was? I did about... 10 kilo in three days, so probably did about six. What did you do in the bath check in six or something? No, because I did what, what I did was the night before, I did a workout and then did a sauna, lost about three or four kilo. Then, first bath, I don't know what I did, but whatever it was, I missed weight by three pounds. And the whole night we were, we were coming weight and it just wasn't sweating, it was literally losing like 0. 0.1, 0. 0.2. See, I'm the opposite, I think. I think that because when I sit in the bath. I just sit there with a the video on or music on or something. Yeah, I, just I think I've got PTSD because I'd stop. I wasn't losing how, weight how in it. How long was you sitting in the bath for? Doing 20 in. And then towels. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we do. 20, 20, 20. in, yeah. Or some, if you can just sit in the towels and you're still sweating, you leave there yeah. to keep sweating. That's what I've done last time. And the, But the time before when he only had like four pounds to do, me and Molly just got in the sauna. Yeah, yeah, easy, yeah. yeah. That's what I did last time as well. Just did like a sauna for an a hour. Bit, a little bit to go. You only need to do yeah, that. Yeah, and I like making weight the night before so you wake up on weight so you don't have to do it in the morning. I, I, I know what you mean. Because I'll not be able mean, to sleep because I'll have the fear that... that... No, that's the thing. No, no, my last fight. <sighs> my last fight. I don't cut weight the night before. Done about six pound, seven pound even. Then I had the worst night sleep of my life. But see, I don't sleep. So... I... If I make weight, then I'll just I'll probably just lie in bed and stay awake. No, I try and sleep. I try to, but I, I can't. I think I, I think my whoop band said like I'd had an hour and a half. Yeah, but a lot up, of people don't sit, don't I ended sleep. Up getting up at half five or something, I'm just going getting in a bath on my own. Got in a bath. Molly woke up. She messaged me. She come and sat with me. While I was sitting in the bath. Because you're not thinking. Because when you go to bed that night, you think you're thinking about it in your head. You're I know, about but it. I'm, I'm thinking about it next time. We'll see how much weight I've got to go. But next time, I'm seriously thinking about getting up at like five in the morning. Yeah. And just doing it. All of it. Yeah. Like the morning of the weigh-in. Yeah. So say we weigh yeah. in at nine. So do not dairy the night before? No. Because you want to be dehydrated for as least. I know. Time see, as I know possible, that, but you? I also don't like. I'm like, I need to be on weight, so I like try to do it all the night yeah. before, which is stupid, like, and I know it is, but it's like mentally. Because last time I was, I ended up being a little bit under, so I could have a little sips of drinks as I was sitting there, but still. That just, night sleep's the worst. Yeah, that night sleep, it just proper like all that day. Obviously, I had to go and do the ceremonial way into five. Oh. I never got back to to my room You're after so having tired, something to eat till about. Nine or so, no, yeah, nine o'clock, half nine. I end up just going right to bed. Yeah. Woke up the next morning about eight o'clock or something, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. But I still was missing out on hours that I should have had the night before. Yeah. But I'm thinking, if I, it's obviously if you've got ten pounds to do, I'm I'm not gonna fucking risk doing that in the morning. Yeah, yeah. it depends how much you've got yeah, to go. Yeah, depends how much you've got to go. But if I've got six to do, I'll get up early and do that. Yeah, like three baths yeah. or something. We say, Holly Home always says she does 10 pounds the morning of the weigh-in. It's like, how? <laughs> how like 10 pounds? Like, she's such a big girl as well. It's like... Yeah, the more muscle you've got on your body, yeah, the, the more, more you can sweat, can't you? Yeah. And I retain a lot of water, so I can cut a lot of water weight. Yeah, I do. I've, I've had the, the like the tests on that done in the uni, and they said, wow, how much water did you drink last night? I was like, drank about three, four litres yesterday. You're like, wow, that's weird. You've got major water in you. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. the tame water, which is good as well, isn't it? Because then you can sweat it out. Yeah, I'm, that's what I mean. That's what I'm terrible for out of camp. Drinking water? Yeah. Oh, I do like three or four litres a day. See, that's what I mean. When I'm in camp, I'll drink three, four litres a day. Easy. When I'm out of camp, I'll you drink like five it, cans yeah. of Coke. Do you drink Diet Coke in camp? No. Do you not? No. no. Diet Coke is disgusting. No. <laughs> Don't tell me you like Diet Coke, Leah. Love it. It's in camp, it's like that one thing that oh, you have Go one, away. one a day. Go away. What do you have? What is your like one thing a day? Or do you have something... They no. get you through the day. Me macro chef goodies. Yeah. What calories are you doing? Two thousand a day. Yeah, it's a little. But like at the, at the, it's but that the macro last, chef's nice. Molly, yeah, the yeah. macro chef's sad. Yeah. Sad. I was going to bring one with me, but people have been moaning when I'm eating on the camera. <laughs> Haven't you? You gang of nits. <laughs> What's he smacking his lips for there on the camera while he's doing it? Because I'm sitting here starving, lad. I'm hungry. I you just get attacked it no matter what you do. Yeah, I've had like 
600 calories or something today and burned about 3,000 two big <laughs> sessions but uh, I'm going to have to go back and nail that wrap and maybe even the brownie oh the I had one of the brownies yesterday oh, daddy. how like, like unreal they're, they're the little things that get me through yeah. camp them or like grenade bars grenade bars that's about it I can't really like I literally after this week I've been eating less than 2,000 calories where where I've started like last week when I was in the gym I was every day I was eating like Five, six hundred calories in macro chef, and then of a night I was having like a tea. You know yeah, what I mean, or a, a scran, or going out somewhere. No, like a, oh, you're a dinner. big tea. Yeah, because my t- I was I say a normal tea, but my tea isn't a normal tea. Why? Because it's like twice the size of a normal human's. Oh, do you eat more at night? No, I just eat more than anyone anyway. <laughs> it's just not normal. Not in camp though. No, but that's what I mean. Like last week, I didn't like start dieting properly. Of a night, I was eating teas. I was going out and eating chicken wings and stuff like that. So this week, I started, I started, I got on the scales on Monday morning, 88.8. Woke up this morning, 86. After the first, after that session we done today after sparring, I was 85.3. Oh, that's good. So, I just can't wait to laugh at everyone that said I'm going to miss weight. Best feeling ever. I can't wait, I swear, I'm going to laugh in people's faces. I think my opponent actually thinks I'm going to miss weight as well. I've seen him say a few things. I'm just like, glad are you for real. I know, you're not. I'm not going to miss weight. I'm a pro at this shit. <laughs> Especially with Paul Reed. Paul Reed's the man. Yeah, he's cool. Paul Reed is the man. I swear. He absolutely transformed my body. And everything. See, when you, you know were saying the other day, you couldn't, even, you couldn't even lift the pole or the bar. No, I couldn't. When did you start training with him? Did you only start doing lifting like recently? Thought, yeah, I only started doing lifting just before the Decky Dalton fight. Oh, my second worries. to last cage where he was yeah. fight, but then obviously, as soon as that fight happened, we went into lockdown. I had to get surgery <gasps> on my hand, so I was out for about six months. Yeah. When I come, I come back in like the January, January twenty one. I started like doing it properly. That's mad, isn't and it? And at that time, I couldn't, I couldn't bench the bar. <laughs> it was like that. I couldn't. <laughs> Oh, yeah, probably probably you actually just weren't used to it like as oh, well. And me, it was me wrist as well. Like where I've had I've had two surgeries on this wrist and one surgery on this, and that had only just been done yeah. a couple of months prior. That had only been done like three months before the new year. I think I got done in like the October or the September, and it still went proper real. But I obviously had to start training on because we was fighting in the March. When I went into that Martinez fight, it still went the same. I yeah. had to just crack on in that fight. Oh, you had some like some big setbacks as yeah. well, didn't you? Some horrible ones. Yeah, like wrists. I remember that. It's just me wrists mainly. Like them ones were done by the NHS, so them ones like that. What was the wrist from? That one was the scaphoid bone. I had surgery twelve weeks before I fought back. Had the wires took out six weeks before I fought them. And then obviously my hand just weren't strong enough when I was fighting him. Yeah. And then I punched him in the second round and broke my hand again. Shit. So I had to wait another few months to get the surgery on that hand and get that sorted. So I was out for time. The, the surgery is the worst out there. The worst. And, and then, mentally you're just like, oh my fucking god. And then God's. I fought Dalton and Paul said, go and get that wrist looked at. And they just said, like, I had a ligament there and he said, it's just gone. He said, how long has that been eating you for? And I went, about a year was it from like striking yeah think, from yeah. striking and he went I was like about a year it's been it and he was like yeah, yeah he was like normally there's a little bit of the tissue left of the ligament but yeah my ligament was gone nowhere I'd just trained on it that much and he had to they had to take something out of here no way and put I put it, it back in put it back in there that's you know I mean? intense mad like, and I, I couldn't do nothing with that for months and that that was during lockdown though so yeah. I was just sitting in ours getting I, fat. I had a shoulder surgery during lockdown. Like, like they when I went in for my shoulder surgery, they were like, that so shoulder's like someone like three times your age. Because because of my overhook, and I, when I throw, yeah. I constantly land, was landing their body weight and my body weight through that shoulder. So yeah. it was like years and years of damage. So it was like during lockdown, like we were locked in the house and I had surgery. I was like, it was fucking depressing, wasn't it? <laughs> was. Bro, as I say, I just got fat. Yeah, I got fat too. And I, yeah, was, like, I was eating all you, sorts of shite and ass. Because it's the only thing that make you feel good. And then it's like, am I ever, is, is the world ever going back to normal again? Will I ever fight again? Will this ever heal? Because yeah. it's fucking with, killing me. With that as well, I'd, I'd fought like two days before we went into lockdown. So I couldn't even go out and get scrams what I wanted to get after the thought. Yeah. So I was just in ours binging on chocolate and cookies and shit like that. Yeah, because there was, was no like, good food, it was, was there. like cookie 
big dollop of Nutella, just putting another cookie on top, microwaving it for 10 seconds and just nailing it. <laughs> Shit like that. So I ended up fat after that. But then obviously when I come back for that, but I always do it, I can't help it. Like Getting fat. Yeah. I'm on a try after this fight. But I'll probably we, say we this. I said say that, that and then I, Yeah, I said that all the way through my last camp until I got a week out and I just went, nah, I'm going to get fat as fuck. <laughs> but like, I'd probably not, I'm going to back to America in August, so I probably won't fight till like October. Yeah. So if I want to get fat, I can. Get fat. But I think like fighters definitely get eating disorders from cutting weight. Yeah, uh, that is what it's from. I've it's said totally this so many disorder. times. I've got an eating disorder. Yeah, but I think like most, the majority of fighters will because they restrict themselves so, so, so much. It's like, and they put their bodies and their heads through hell. It's like when you have that freedom and you know you don't have to make weight soon, it's like, oh, I, I can be a normal person. I can eat. I can like... like when people see me eat, they're like, ah, do you still eat them? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Like it's bad. But I do that too. It's like you just keep eating because you, you can. It's yeah. not really because you want it. It's because you can. Yeah, it's because you can. And other times, like, no, you've got to stop eating. You can't have nothing else. So you've got to have a meal this big. Yeah. Or a leaf of lettuce. Yeah. See, I don't even do that. Like, I, I take some greens out of my stands. No, so I, don't, I don't really like it either. I don't. Like, I had a noodle one before. Um, macro Chef. <laughs> I'm going to shout at me for this but it's got like spring greens in. I yeah. just do that with the greens and just noodles and the, the, yeah. the char siu. Just, yeah, well better. I'm the same. I had, I had the same yesterday with I had the salad last night and I took the onions and the peppers out. <laughs> I've got that one. I'm like, Molly, give me that one today. Yeah, salad, that, yeah. Uh, that onions and peppers, I'm just like, you can't put onions on anything, man. Peppers, not so, too bad. I do it like either. I, I don't, like I'll say neither if, if like I'm getting something. I'll say. Yeah, like, if I get food. A, if I get a burger, I just want meat, cheese, maybe bacon and sauce. That's it. I want a burger now. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's it. You don't want nothing else. I know. Like I've when I done that it. Brendan Sharp thing, the van, it was a, 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 a Wagyu beef van. And it done like... Oh, was it unreal? Oh, it was unbelievable. But he went to... Yeah, we do double, so we put double that on and double pork belly. Yeah. And then he, he went like, I know, I said all oh, shit like fucking onions, grilled onions and all shit. And I just went, lad, none of that. Just yeah. sauce and meat for me and cheese. Unreal. And he went, do you want me to triple it for you then? I was like, triple burger, triple uh, pork belly. He was like, yeah. I was like, go on, son, get it done. <laughs> uh, I absolutely nailed every last bit of it as well. Every last bit of it. It was unbelievable. It I didn't unreal. think the food truck would be beef? that nice. But in, in California, the big, but aren't that's they? A, like, it's like street food, isn't it? They have yeah. so much food. I was in Texas in November doing the... Nogi Worlds and went out that night and oh my god the food is just insane in America it's like yeah. the portions are bigger everything's bigger and you just want to eat in every single restaurant or every single van and then dessert and then maybe more food it's just like you just want to keep going everywhere I go in America I get starters mains and desserts mm -hmm. everywhere so nice even though the meals are that big I'm not asked the goal gets it as well every it's last so bit good. of it I swear American like, food is next level. It is American food. And delightful. there's so many like the varieties and scene yeah. as well, isn't it? Even the variety of sauces they have. Yeah. Like when Blaze come over here, he was like, "Dude, where's the ranch?" I'm just <laughs> like, ranch is so good. Have you been to In and Out? <laughs> Silly on. question. Silly question, Leah. Isn't uh, it sick? It's the heaviest. What you get though? Just the you only get the double, isn't it, or no, something? I get four by four me. What for? Four patties, four slices oh, of cheese. God, no. Yeah, I've actually that's on one of my vlogs. Me eating it, oh, just like that. It's so good. Munching into it, it needs to come to the UK. It does. They need to do it in and out. In and out. Like the only other one I think what was decent over there, like like in and out with Shake Shack. Yeah, it's Shake good. Shack's good, but in and out's just next level. Like, isn't I think it? the chips are pretty shit. Well, what they like to say, fries. <laughs> the fries. <laughs> the fries, fries are pretty shit, but the they burger, have like a secret sauce, don't they? Yeah. Animal sauce. But nobody knows what it is, yeah. doesn't it? It's got all little onions in oh, there. It's the only killer for me. <laughs> you don't like it? No. <laughs> nah, I do like it, but it's got it like on the middle bit they put in, there's loads of onions. So I let Lord eat that bit and I eat the outside of the chips. <laughs> oh my you know God. I mean, them onions are nitty. Oh, yeah, love it at night. I had this, yeah, here's a good question for you, Leah. This might be the next the question I have to ask all my guests from now on. Do you like pineapple on a pizza? No. Good girl. What psychopath would ever want that? What like weirdo? Psychopath. What weirdo likes pineapple on a pizza? I don't know anybody. Like I used to love Masvidal, and that half put me off him. Because he has. Him eating 
ham and pineapple pizza in the post fight press conference like lad you're horrible and the, like the weird texture and the, like, the fruity flavour pineapple's flavor. meant to be cold yeah. Only it's meant to be cold why Why are you putting it on a pizza yeah that's not good it's for a fruit salad on a pizza I don't or like pineapple time. altogether even cold don't like it no I don't but like it on either. a pizza like I knew put like when people get mushroom on a pizza what are you doing <laughs> like what's what going on what pizza do you like uh, the barbecue based meat feast mm. So it's got like sausage. Some of them even have donut meat on, don't they? Pepperoni, yeah. chicken, but uh, or double pepperoni. That's it. Yeah, clean. I like. I even like margarita. Tomato, obviously, yeah. Cheese and tomato. New York has the best pizza ever. Um, we went to a one or two or like pizza gaffs there, but the pizza in America is just heavy. Yeah, so much better. Yeah, even the Domino's there is better. Is it? The I've first, been the there. first night we got there in San Diego last time, I should have seen it. We ordered two large pizzas and she was like, oh, I want this pasta as well because it's mad. They do like little carbonaras and all that there. And what, Domino's? In the Domino's, yeah. They do all little carbonaras and that. So Laura got a carb pasta overloads. as well. Carb overloads. Yeah, it was carb overload. She nailed the pasta. Should have seen We had pizza in the fridge for days. Oh and the haven't just been half of it. <laughs> <laughs> but we got that, exactly what I just said. A barbecue base meat feast and a double pepperoni. This is making me so hungry now. Standard. <laughs> this is what this, like... I reckon 30% of this podcast is talking about food. food. Like every podcast What do you have straight after the fight? We always go to McDonald's straight away because it's the only place ever open. Exactly. Yeah, Isn't you're not it the wrong only there. Pla- well, Everybody's like, what do you have after? It's like the only, did I have whatever's open because yeah. it's the only thing that you can get. That's the only annoying thing about fighting Because the fight's over so yeah. late. That was what was boss when we fought in Vegas that time because we Early. fought like in the day. So we went back to Gaffin the on the Popeyes, then a Shake Shack, then I got a Dairy Queen. That's a dream, fighting but early. Last time, we went to the after party and they had a the kitchen. So the after party done as a little dummy, yeah. a little scram. Obviously everyone else was pissed and whatnot and I just went, lad, get Food. that chef on. Yeah. He brought two big trays out of wings. He brought a few burgers and chips out and that's so what I got nailed. But know what? It's mad because I've been saying, I've said it on this and I've said it on loads of things. I've been cra- craving. Have you seen the place German Donner Kebab? No. Where is it? There's one in, in town in like by the bus stops. But I always think in camp, you'll see something that you don't, always want but then you'll think about that do you yeah. know what I mean like, no, but this like I've had one before it's unbelievable it's like Donnie but like clean mm. look. it's like pro- proper Donnie you know what I mean it's heavy and I'm proper into it and before you know, me you're last like, fight you're like obsessed over something the whole way through me, camp yeah, like before that. me last fight I was like that's it like I was going to get a cheat meal like six weeks out ended up getting that double chicken McSandwich because that was the the promo what was on. Molly got that. I see, remember she was telling me about that. Yeah, I got that because that was the promo what was on. But I was I wanted to get one of them, Jamie and Donna's. And then I come out my fight thinking, oh yeah, there was one in the O2. So it was like a shot <sighs> at 11. Obviously, I was doing interviews for that long. I didn't even get into the after party, like 20 past 12. That's so long. Yeah, because I was doing pure interviews. And, and all you want to do is eat. I still haven't had one. <laughs> I still haven't had one. And I'm fighting again in six weeks. You're going to have to wait. I still haven't had one. Where I went abroad, where we went to America and we was away for like five weeks. And then before I went away, we was only home for like two weeks and I was going for a meal like every day, every night. That's why I ended up so fat. I just go out and eat meals. Constantly. And because and cause they bring it, you just eat it, isn't it? Because their portions are so big. Yeah. You, just, you can't leave it. Like I can't I leave get, No, I get fatter, yeah. I do, yeah. I get fatter, yeah, before I go there. I just got extra fat there. <laughs> like I got up to like... One nine eight or something when I was in Liverpool, but then it just like went overboard when I was there, and I ended up getting on the scales one day and being two oh five. But when you're in that like rhythm of eating f- whatever you want, all, you just get yeah, so you do. hard to and stop. And as I say, my appetite is not unlike you've ever seen. So like I was multiple think- people have said to me, lad, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, but I've never seen anyone eat as much as you eat. But do you not think whenever we stop fighting, we're gonna? Oh, be- I, I'm gonna look like Prince Ashley, mama. <laughs> Big I know tubs. I am. Me and Prince be like that. The cage, uh, cage side and ring side of all shows. Happy just and fat. Like right that. Looking like Chris Griffin. <laughs> fat and happy. I'll probably have to get a gastric band when I'm older, me. I, I will. Because I'm a big, big fat But then you'll eat through it. You can eat through them and then like burst them. Can you? Mm-hmm. Uh, I probably do that. And then you get a gastric band. You, I think you can really drink liquid so there's like no pleasure in eating. You can really like drink soluble like things. Yeah, that sounds shit. That, yeah, that's who like would one ever want to do that? That's made up I haven't got from COVID. Although some people still haven't got the sense of taste. Oh the my God, smell, yeah. That it like, sense of smell, I'd rather have my sense of taste. But obviously if you lose your sense of smell, you're losing some of your taste as well, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. And vice versa. So it's mad. Did you get COVID? Yeah, I had it twice. I've had it twice too. But didn't really do nothing to me. 
Yeah, the no, first I'm time sick. I had it, first time I had it was like six weeks before I fought Martinez. And I had it two weeks before my last fight. And I was like, one day I went for a run. This just meant it was like in the height of it as well. Well, no, it wasn't. It was like January 2021. Yeah. And like, I went for a run, got back in and I had to cut my run down. I normally do five miles. I had to cut it to like three. Was your breathing bad? And when I got back, I was like... <laughs> <coughs> it was weird. <laughs> As <is> you... <coughs> yeah, fucking hell. It sounded like Mr. Wheezy off Toy Story. Oh my God. No, I had it, but it didn't affect my breathing, but I was so like weak and yeah, ill. That's, for the first two days, that's what I was like. I had a little bit of diarrhea and I was weak. Like, yeah, I was, like, it's horrible feeling. Walking up the stairs and then I was like, wow, what's going on here? Like my legs were sore and that. Yeah. But then literally a week later, I felt sad. Yeah, no, I was bad because I, I had it so close to my last fight, like two weeks, I couldn't like cut you weight. You wouldn't be able to train or not? No, like, I, all I could do was walk and try and get my fucking weight, not eat and walk. <laughs> I was sweating at night time. Was like, See, that's the only, that's what one thing I do love about training. I can train, then I can eat. Yeah. You know what I mean? <sighs> like, it's the worst when you're injured and you can't train and you're dieting and you've got to rest. And you're like, ah. Oh. Because you're still melting yeah, and you still, still can't eat. you're still starving. You're like... Oh, I don't want to eat this. I know. I mean, the worst one was when that Decky Dalton fight when I thought it was getting called off because the UFC got called off, didn't it? That time and Molly was meant to fight. Oh my god, that was the worst ever. It was like and two like, weeks before UFC yeah, London, wasn't it? Was it? A week before, yeah. Yeah. Loads of people were fighting. On. Edwards was Leon was fighting um, Woodley. Jai oh. was meant to fight the Casey. There was loads that of was fights such on a card it. Too, yeah, wasn't it? Molly was on it. Like Molly's opponent got it, and then had to get put state on a plane. That's before. right. And I thought the cage, the cage was going to get cancelled, and. It never, but I mean, I kind of got the phone Did call you fight saying, on that? Yeah, behind closed doors. It was like the only sport event what was on, on the Friday. And I can remember like, being on the phone to me and Dean. He's like, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, Pad, just keep your head on it. Spoke to Paul, spoke to Graham. They're all like, keep your head on it. I swear, in ours, there was a birthday cake. And I was like... That is, that is the most mental fucking challenge ever. I was ever. like, because it was my granddad's birthday. It was not long after, yeah, because it was my granddad's birthday's Patrick's Day, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. And the cake was there and the fight was on like the 20th. I was like, eat. I didn't know whether the fight was going to be off or not. Yeah. So it's a killer. And did you but, not eat it? No. I never. That is serious. And even, la- even after me on my debut as well, when I was meant to fight Vendor Amini, I um, with my visa, I didn't know what was happening with my visa. I got home from London. I just sat in ours and cried for two hours thinking I'm not fighting. And I was on the verge going to get a KFC that night. And I never. But that is it. like the worst. Whenever you, you might have a chance to eat it, but then you don't. Yeah. It's like, should I eat it? No, no. Should I eat it, shouldn't I? But then both times for me, it's actually been, yeah, I shouldn't have. So I'm glad I never. Yeah, you But as I say, I've done four pounds for that Fenzamini fight, so I probably wouldn't have, probably would have still made weight anyway. I still nail the KFC. <laughs> but um, yeah, just before we finish, Leah, tell everyone where to find you on your social medias and all that stuff and tell everyone about your fight and that. Yeah, so um, I think, Liam McCord MMA social media and my next fight's in the Three Arena in Dublin on the 23rd of September and it's nearly sold out. There's a ticket link in my bio. Come watch me fight. There you go, people. That was episode 33 of Chat and Pony with Paddy the Baddy. We'll see you again very soon. Got some guests lined up that you'll love. <laughs>